Activities of Daily Living, Wikipedia Article Audio Activities of daily living is a term used in healthcare to refer to people's daily self-care activities. The concept of ADLS was originally proposed in the 1950s by Sidney Katz and his team at the Benjamin Rose Hospital in Cleveland, O, and has been added to and refined by a variety of researchers since that time. Health professionals often use a person's ability or inability to perform ADLS as a measurement of their functional status, particularly in regard to people post-injury, with disabilities, and the elderly. Younger children often require help from adults to perform ADLS, as they have not yet developed the skills necessary to perform them independently. ADLS are defined as the things we normally do, such as feeding ourselves, bathing, dressing, grooming, work, homemaking, and leisure. A number of national surveys collect data on the ADL status of the U.S. population. While basic definitions of ADLS have been suggested, what specifically constitutes a particular ADL for each individual may vary. Adaptive equipment and devices may be used to enhance and increase independence in performing ADLS. Basic Instrumental Basic ADLS consist of self-care tasks that include, but are not limited to, one way to think about basic ADLS is that they are the things many people do when they get up in the morning and get ready to go out of the house, get out of bed, go to the toilet, bathe, dress, groom, and eat. There is a hierarchy to the ADLS, the early loss function is hygiene, the mid loss functions are toilet use and locomotion, and the late loss function is eating. When there is only one remaining area in which the person is independent, there is a 62.9% chance that it is eating and only a 3.5% chance that it is hygiene. Although not in wide general use, a mnemonic that some find useful is death, dressing slash bathing, eating, ambulating, toileting, hygiene. Instrumental activities of daily living are not necessary for fundamental functioning, but they let an individual live independently in a community. Role of Therapy Occupational therapists often evaluate IADLs when completing patient assessments. The American Occupational Therapy Association identifies 12 types of IADLs that may be performed as a CO occupation with others. Occupational therapists teach and rebuild the skills required to maintain, regain, or increase a person's independence in all activities of daily living that have declined because of health conditions, injury or age-related debility. Assistance Physical therapists use exercises to assist patients in maintaining and gaining independence in ADLS. The exercise program is based on what components patients are lacking such as walking speed, strength, balance, and coordination. Slow walking speed is associated with increased risk of falls. Exercise enhances walking speed allowing for safer and more functional ambulation capabilities. After initiating an exercise program it is important to maintain the routine otherwise the benefits will be lost. Exercise for patients who are frail is essential for preserving functional independence and avoiding the necessity for care from others or placement in a long-term care facility. Assisting in activities of daily living are skills required in nursing and as well as other professions such as nursing assistants. This includes assisting in patient mobility, such as moving an activity intolerant patient within bed. For hygiene, this often involves bed baths and assisting with urinary and bowel elimination. There are several evaluation tools such as the CATS ADL scale, 
the Older Americans Resources and Services ADL slash IADL scale, the Lawton IADL scale and the Bristol Activities of Daily Living scale. Evaluation Most models of healthcare service use ADL evaluations in their practice, including the medical models, such as the Roper Logan Tierney model of nursing, and the resident centered models, such as the program of all inclusive care for the elderly. Research ADL evaluations are used increasingly in epidemiological studies as an assessment of health in later life that does not necessarily involve specific ailments. Studies using ADL differ from those investigating specific disease outcomes, as they are sensitive to a broader spectrum of health effects, at lower levels of impact. ADL is measured on a continuous scale making the process of investigation fairly straightforward. Sydney Katz initially studied 64 hip fracture patients over an 18-month period. Comprehensive data on treatments, patient progression, and outcomes were collected during this study. After analyzing the study data, the researchers discovered that the patients they viewed as being most independent could perform a set of basic activities ranging from the most complex bathing activity, to the least complex feeding activity. From these data, CATS developed a scale to assess patients' ability to live independently. This was first published in the 1963 in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the paper has since been cited over 1,000 times. Although the scale offers a standardized measure for psychological and biological function, the process of arriving at this assumption has been criticized. Specifically, Porter has argued for a phenomenological approach noting that Katz ETAL made a claim that became the basis for the ontological assumptions of the ADL research tradition. In their suggestion that there was an ordered regression as part of the natural process of aging, there was an implicit generalization, from their sample of older persons with fractured hips, to all older persons. Porter emphasizes the possible disease specific nature of ADLS the need for objective definition of ADLS, and the possible value of adding additional functional measures. A systematic review examined the effectiveness of imparting activities of daily life skills programs for people with chronic mental illnesses. Bathing and showering, personal hygiene and grooming, dressing, toilet hygiene, functional mobility, often referred to as transferring, as measured by the ability to walk, get in and out of bed, and get into and out of a chair, the broader definition is useful for people with different physical abilities who are still able to get around independently, self-feeding. Cleaning and maintaining the house, managing money, moving within the community, preparing meals, shopping for groceries and necessities, taking prescribed medications, using the telephone or other form of communication. Care of others, care of pets, child rearing, communication management, community mobility, financial management, health management and maintenance, home establishment and maintenance, meal preparation and cleanup, religious observances, safety procedures and emergency responses, shopping.